the two previous lectures can be considered as an introduction to R. We have understood how the R platform works, what are the basic capabilities of the R platform, how do we install the R console, how do we install packages, etc. But we haven't really started doing any kind of data manipulation in R. Now is the time when we actually start working with data in R. We will feed some data into the console and then manipulate it. This third R is only an introduction to the most basic operations in R and to the nature of the objects. As often as possible, examples will be displayed so that you can see the inputs and the outputs of the computations. As usual, the inputs will be displayed in red and the outputs in blue since these colors are the ones present by default in the R console for Windows. The first of the five topics contained in this lecture is about elementary operations and peculiarities of the R syntax. You will learn how to set up a working directory, how to perform basic mathematical operations such as sum, product, division, log, power, roots and exponential. We will also teach you some of the peculiarities of the R syntax compared to other software such as SAS. So those of you who are familiar with SAS, this is where we will start highlighting the difference between how SAS works and how R works. We have already provided many examples of commands in R in the slides in the previous lectures. And uh, if you've not already tried to write these commands in your R software, now is the time to do it. So let's uh, open R by clicking on the desktop shortcut. We can also click on the executable file in the R home directory. So we've opened the R console and you can see that at the bottom of the console there is a red character, red greater than sign. This is the sign that initiates a line in R. Okay, so anything that we type, this is where it will get typed. So let's start by creating an object called me and assign it my name Gaurav. So when I type in me and I use the less than equal to dash sign for assigning a value to this object. Now essentially what I've done is I've created an object me which has the value Gaurav. When I press enter you can see that a new greater than sign has appeared and the cursor has moved to the next line. This means that the R command has been executed. You would not get something which says the command has been executed fine every time you type in a command. But if you press enter and a new greater than sign appears, it is assumed that R has processed this command. Now, if I want to see the value of uh, this object me, I just type me and enter. And you can see that a new line has appeared where the output of the object me has been displayed in blue color. So you can see the value Gaurav being displayed in blue text here. So this essentially is the beginning of programming in R. If you are doing this as you're watching the video, congratulations, you have written your first program in R. You have created an object me and then you have displayed the value that is contained in that object. If you're familiar with the Unix world or regularly type command through Windows terminal, this shouldn't be too difficult for you. As you can see, it's relatively easy to do, although a bit impressive the first time you do it. You will learn progressively that typing instructions in a console might be much quicker than doing operations through a GUI. That's one of the reasons why Unix users claim its superiority over Windows operating systems. Typing instructions in the console should be limited to very short set of instructions as you have to type and then execute instruction by instruction. To develop lengthier codes, you have to use a text editor or even better an IDE as we've seen in the previous lecture. So now we've uh, done our first bit of programming. The next thing that we need to do is before uh, we start feeding R with our first scalars, vectors or data frames, it's always convenient to first set up a working directory, namely the place where your data sets, your R files, R scripts, R data, R history, all these files and uh, later even your output files will be located. So to do so, it's quite simple. You have to type set wd, which is the command for setting the working directory, set wd in within brackets and within quotes, we type in the file path. So let's see how we do that. I type in set wd and brackets, then quotation marks and say I have a working directory called r in the e drive. So I'm setting that as my working directory. So I have essentially written set WD, I've typed in the brackets, 
the quotation marks then I've given the path name notice the slash that is used here between the drive and the folder this is the slash that you will use when you're working with R when you're assigning path names this is different from the slash used by Windows so now when I press enter again I can see that the new greater than sign has appeared in the line below where I typed and the cursor has moved there which means that my command has executed so essentially now I have set my working directory as this folder which is folder R in the drive E it doesn't mean that we have created any file in this directory or we've created a folder but we have just assigned this place to be the working directory this is where all the files that we store later will get added and to check if the working directory has been correctly set up we can type the instruction get wd followed by the brackets in the console this means get working directory so let's do that here get wd I get an error can uh, anyone guess why I've got this error this is because R is case sensitive and since I'm typing everything in uppercase here, it doesn't recognize the command. Now if I type the same thing in lowercase, it returns the value E slash R, which means it's telling me this is the working directory that has been assigned, which is the same as what I typed in when I used the set working directory command. So this means that R has assigned this folder as the working directory. Imagine that you've finished working and that uh, you want to keep your work. To save the whole workplace all at once, that is all the objects contained in your current session, you can type save.image, which is the shortcut of the longer save list command, which is save list is equal to ls, all is equal to true, file is equal to r data, or q is equal to yes, meaning quitting and yes, I want to save my work. So uh, this is essentially a shortcut command called save.image which will save everything that you've uh, created in your session and will save it all in one go.